Thank you for joining the Successful Man Podcast. This is episode seven. Excited to be working on this doctrine document, ADP 7 Tax Zero, dealing with training, talking about how training is the most important thing that units do. That's what the United States Army says. So I think as men, as fathers, we need to really consider strongly how we're training our kids. If we're training, if it's a focus point, if it's something that we spend time putting effort into. Because I will tell you, as you begin to grow a family, as you're trying to, you know, in your 20s or 30s, you're trying to better yourself and your career, you're still trying to get along with your new spouse, training your kids is, is just not really something you're thinking about. You're just thinking about getting through the day <laughs> and to take that extra time uh, to train them can sometimes be a difficult thing. So but let's dig into chapter one here that talks about training to fight and win. Section one says the army trains to fight and win, period. That is the focus of training, to fight and to win. And really, you know, with our kids, we need to have a why to our training. It needs to be uh, more than just, you know, I'm, I'm helping you change the oil, right? I need to, I want to train you. My mindset needs to be, I'm helping you change the oil because I want you to not have to worry about a vehicle that uh, you've messed up because you failed to do some simple maintenance on it, right? You don't need that distraction in your life, especially if you're starting off newly married and you're poor, you're not making a lot of money, or maybe you got one vehicle, you don't have two, or maybe you only have two vehicles, but you both work. You don't need one going down for the count. So you need to be able to check and change your oil on a routine basis, and I'm going to train you to do it. So that's something you never, ever have to worry about in this this battle of life that you have to face. You don't need that added challenge just because I didn't train you for it. So I want you to win at life. So I'm going to train you in all of these areas that are going to help you be successful. The Army trains to fight and win. It says to do this, the Army trains by developing proficiencies in mission essential tasks, weapon systems, and the effective integration and deployment of both. So again, mission essential tasks, METs. The Army has, and the Air Force and all branches of service, you know, they've taken that mission that you are, that one mission that, or that that two-phased mission or, or whatever it may be in a, in a particular condition, you know, this environment, you need to be able to accomplish this, uh, these one, two, or three things. I'm going to take that mission set, and I'm going to break it down into the 5, 10, 20, 170 essential tasks that you need to be able to accomplish in a certain amount of time with a certain amount of people, a certain amount of equipment in order to accomplish that mission. People have actually thought that through. I think that's pretty impressive. So that means, you know, our military, you know, if they're called up for a mission, boom, we've already been training. We know exactly how many people, how much equipment, and and where we need to go, when we need to leave, uh, what we need to do. That's why we're so good at what we do. I can't help but think, you know, translate that to our kids, right? When we send them off into life, how many of them, how many kids in our life and, and really just don't have a, 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 a grand idea of how to operate day to day. They're, they're, they struggle with just the simplest tasks, right? And I think it's so important that we um, help our children become proficient in some of the simple things, whether it's home maintenance, car maintenance, budgeting, finances, uh, relationships, how we interact with people, um, timeliness, uh, effort on a job, attention to detail, things like that, just to get your mind your mind going. It says the, the expansive scope 
of possible tasks to conduct complex and sustained operations demands that commanders provide subordinates with clearly prioritized training or training guidance that aligns with missions and the resources necessary to train. You know, this, this document makes it clear that the scope of tasks you can train on is, is almost limitless. So they bring it back to commander-focused training based on the, the strategic outlook and the operational environment. And, and I think that's something we can apply as fathers to our kids. You know, we need to have a strategic outlook if we know uh, maybe a particular field that our kids may desire to enter in the workforce. Then we may begin to train them a certain way based on that. If we know they're about to get married uh, or, or they're entering the dating scene, guess what? Our training is going to shift uh, to focus on those things. If they're looking towards getting a job in the future. We may, we may want to begin before they, long before they look for a job uh, to train them in, in certain areas. Uh, when it comes to applying for college and test taking, we may want to work with them, you know, back up several years and begin working with them, training them and how to take tests, how to manage the stress of test taking and things like that. So uh, the commanders, what I love about this document, and, and we see this in the Air Force too, is a lot of leeway is given to commanders to focus training on what they uh, deem important, obviously based on the higher level commander's guidance and then the, the operational environment that they're in. This says commanders ensure soldiers and units train under challenging and realistic conditions that closely replicate an operational environment. Deployed units continue training to sustain their skills and facilitate their adaptation to changes in tactical and demanding operational environments. Candid and objective assessments made as a result of evaluated training and feedback and the rapid application of lessons learned produce effective, versatile, and adaptive units and leaders. That's a lot of verbiage there to just pretty much say we're going to make the training real. We're going to make it complex and difficult because... As they say, uh, you know, all plans are, are out the window at first contact. So it's kind of the same with our kids, right? We, we can teach and train all we want, but the moment they step out on their own in life, you know, it's almost like, have I learned anything? <laughs> you know, I don't remember this. So we've, we've got to find ways, you know, to make, to make s- situations complex and difficult to help them. I'll never forget when... My wife and I um, took a couple of our nieces on a on a senior trip. We went to New York City, and we, my wife and I, decided that when we had a layover in Chicago, which is you know if you've been to O'Hare Airport, it's a pretty big airport, and and we decided then that for one of our nieces to build her confidence, and you know as she's stepping out on her own, we wanted her to realize. Hey, you can make decisions. You're able to do this. So we had the layover. You know, we had our tickets. We walked off the first plane, and we just kind of stood there and waited. And uh, both of them said, hey, what are we doing? And I, and I said, I, I don't know. What are we supposed to do? They said, well, we got another plane to catch. I said, yeah, I think we do. And uh they said, and I, I remember one of them said, well, aren't you going to take us there? I said, no, I'm not. I said, she is. And the look on her face was, on my niece's face was, you mean me? I'm going to be the one? Like, I have no clue where to go. And she may have even said that. But then I said, hey, why don't you look around, look at what everybody else is doing, figure it, see if you can figure out where we need to go next. You're going to lead us there. And it didn't take her long to see people gathered around the screens and so she decided to go over to the screens and look at the flight numbers and figured out what gate to go to and led us right to the gate. Now, there was a little bit more stress along the way than, than what I'm telling in this story, but the point is it was, it was a, to a person that's never done that before, especially a young girl who's lacking some confidence in her own abilities. It was a complex, a stressful situation for her, but it also built confidence in her 
And so it was just a fun way to try to uh, make it realistic. And then at the end of that, I gave her quick feedback on ways she could have maybe improved or done it better, uh, who she could have talked to, other ways to get information. And then overall gave her a, a good attaboy for getting us to where we needed to go in time. This says the core of training readiness centers on tasks that soldiers and units train to fight and win as cohesive and effective teams. It is the progressive development and sustainment of these tasks that form the basis of a unit's ability to conduct unified land operations. This is interesting to me. They actually bring out the fact that training is not a one-time thing. Training is something that is ongoing. Repetition is key, right? You think about a basketball player who wants to be good at shooting. Guess what they need to do? They need to shoot and shoot some more and shoot some more. Not 10, not hundreds, thousands of shots, right, to get better at what they do. So it's second nature. The same goes for the military, right? We need to train. That's why they say every day is a training day. Because every single day we're repeating tasks, we're doing tasks as often as we can so that when we move from the training environment to a combat environment, it's not that much of a leap. And so it's good to, this may be difficult to do in a home situation, but it, it it's something you can do, right? It's something that, you know, for example, I'll just give you a simple example. The first time we had our daughter's um, get gas. You know, you think getting gas at the gas station, not a big deal. Like that's pretty simple, right? But for a, for a kid who's never done it and the first time they've held a, a credit card or a debit card and they're looking at the screen and, you know, it's kind of overwhelming. What do you do? You know, how do you do this? And, and nearly, and both of our girls, both times have forgotten to put the cap on at the end, right? Cause they, they just don't think about that. But, uh, Doing it one time is not enough. It's something that I want I want my daughter, both my daughters, all my daughters, you know, when they go to a gas station, I want them, when they're on their own, alert, aware of their surroundings, paying attention if there's any creepers around, right? I don't want them trying to figure out how to pump gas for the first time. I want them to have done that enough on their own so that they are, better prepared for the more important task of situational awareness. So again, repetitive teaching, even as something simple as pumping gas, gets them proficient, right? So just simple ways we can pull that into our our daily lives here. This uh, The next two sections talk about individual training and collective training. And that's how it finishes up. It says individual training. Soldiers trained to individual tasks which are clearly defined let me stop there i i feel like a failure in some ways as a dad you know because i've i wish i would have spent more time writing these things down through the years you know it'd be awesome to have a field manual for fathers uh here's the which you know i kind of think like boy scouts eagle scouts Girl Scouts, they they have tasks that, uh, if you've had your kids involved in that, you know, life tasks that they're supposed to do. But it'd be cool to have something for dads, you know, a handbook of here's here's some tasks, you know, age specific tasks that you uh, that you can do. Maybe some of you can help me out with that. Send me your thoughts on on what should be included in that. I would love to hear from you. But it says soldiers trained to individual tasks, which are clearly defined, observable and measurable activities accomplished by an individual. These individual tasks enable soldiers to master the necessary fundamental skills to fight and win. Again, I think if I'm thinking this through for the first time, and everybody, all of us are going to think differently, but as you think about your children from your own perspective, from your own insights that you've gained through the years, you know what do your kids need to learn to master life? What what tasks, no matter how small, no matter how big, what are the things that that they need to learn uh, as they get out on their own 
And again, the scope is huge. That's why we talked um, just a little bit ago that commanders, in this case, you're the home commander, right? Commanders are able to uh, focus in training based on uh, what they're doing in life, right? Or based on the mission. So uh, let me keep going here. It says the individual, these individual tasks enable soldiers to master the necessary fundamental skills to fight and win. Training and education prepares soldiers to perform assigned tasks to standard. Training and education also provide the skills and confidence that individuals need in order to perform duties and accomplish missions under a wide range of circumstance, circumstances, some of which may be unfamiliar. When, if I was to put a phrase to that, it's simply critical thinking. What they're talking about here is you're, you're working with young troops, teaching them skills, and giving them confidence so that uh, no matter the situation that arises, they have the critical thinking skills to apply and think through, you know, apply the techniques they've learned, think through the situation, and, and get through that particular situation. So developing critical thinking in our kids is so important. And, and really the only way to do that is to put them in it, you know, to put them in situations. So here's, here's, a, here's a thought for you or something you could write down in your journal. You could say, what do, and then put a blank there, because that's for your child's name. You know, what, what does Sally, what does Johnny need to learn to fight and win? I mean, you could even think about what does my family need to fight and win. For everyone, that's different, right? If if you're on a if you're on the low end of the financial scale, what you need to fight and win is going to be way different than someone that's well established financially. Uh, so it'd be a good exercise for you to even think about for your families. Section one dash eight says unit non commissioned officers. Ensure soldiers meet individual tasks and weapons proficiencies and work to ensure those proficiencies are sustained. Unit NCOs constantly monitor as well as constantly train and, re and retrain as necessary the underlying proficiencies at the individual level. In units where soldiers cannot perform individual skills to standard, the unit cannot effectively execute collective tasks to standard. The whole point here is that Individuals need to meet a certain level so that the unit can function function as a whole. And I think that's true for families, right? If everybody doesn't carry their weight, the family unit is going to suffer. So starting training early on and getting your kids trained in, in the care of a home and in how we work our daily schedule, these are things that it's not easy to master, but it's something we need to consider. Uh, the last section here talks about collective training. Units progress to more complex collective training. Collective training is the essence of teamwork and develops the mutual trust essential to developing effective, cohesive teams. And I think that's important as families. If we can find ways to get our kids working as a team. Because guess what? When you're married, you're a team. When you have a family, you're a team. When you're when you have a job, you're a part of a team. When you're a part of a church, you're part of a team. Uh, and, and so being able to work as a team is a critical skill. Uh, Section 11 says there's never sufficient resources or time to train every collective task equally well. That is something that is, I could say amen to that, right? There's never sufficient resources or time to train every collective task equally well. Commanders and other leaders ensure training is planned for the long range and communicated to subordinates in training guidance and unit training plans that prioritize battle-focused training as the unit's first training priority. Unit training priorities are based upon the guidance provided by the next higher commander. And so, you know, we go back to the lesson I did on the five-year training plan. You know, that to me is where you take the things we're talking about now, what what is it over the next five years, ten years, the long-range plan, 
where I need my kids to be able to fight and win at whatever level they're at. In the next five years, they may be entering high school. So how do they fight and win when they enter high school? What lessons do I need to teach them? Write those down in the five-year plan. And then every month, look for opportunities to train, create complex scenarios, create situations that you can put your kids in and help them to... uh, and, And even if you can't put them in the situation... As I said, every day is a training day, so you as a parent should be monitoring and watching their behavior, how they handle things, relationships, interactions, how they treat their mom, how they treat their sister, their brother. When they talk about what's going on at school, can you turn those into training events and then provide, as it says, the feedback, immediate feedback, that then become lessons learned to help them grow and mature and get better in that particular area. So just to... Again, some ways as we think about this session, we're going to close this one out and and look forward to uh, chapter two, which is the commander's activities in training. So this is this is where uh, it's going to look at how the leadership should handle training in the army, and this is pretty cool because I think I can apply this as a father. I can apply some of these concepts to myself. So until next time, this is the Successful Man Podcast.